step into the golden age of cinema with the 1935 classic, A Night at the Opera. As the Marx Brothers take center stage, the film unfolds with a blend of slapstick comedy and clever wit that continues to charm audiences to this day. The question arises, out of the many roles in this movie, which one was your favorite? Now, let's delve into some lesser known facts that add an intriguing layer to this cinematic gem. Behind the scenes, the film faced challenges and triumphs that often go unnoticed. Are there any anecdotes about a night at the opera that fascinate you? Perhaps the tales of improvisation or the dynamic relationships among the cast and crew. As we revisit this timeless classic, we invite you to share your most cherished memory or personal experience related to a night at the opera. Your stories, whether shared with laughter or nostalgia, contribute to the rich tapestry of the film's legacy. We would love to hear your anecdotes and memories in the comments below. So, out of the many roles, which one was your favorite? Are there any lesser known facts or anecdotes about this movie that fascinate you? What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to a night at the opera? Share your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear your stories and memories. Step back into the glamour of 1935 and relive the magic of a night at the opera. Your journey into the past begins now. A Night at the Opera, released in 1935, is a classic Marx Brothers comedy film that marked a pivotal moment in the brothers' career. Directed by Sam Wood, the movie was a departure from the slapstick antics of their earlier works, showcasing a more refined humor and a coherent plot. Groucho, Chico, and Harpo Marx, the iconic trio, find themselves entangled in a madcap adventure when they try to help two young lovers, played by Alan Jones and Kitty Carlisle, achieve their dreams in the world of opera. The film is renowned for its witty dialogue, memorable musical sequences, and the iconic stateroom scene, where an absurd number of people squeeze into a tiny cabin. A night at the opera not only demonstrated the Marx Brothers' comedic genius, but also brought a new sophistication to their brand of humor. The film's success had a lasting impact on popular culture, influencing subsequent generations of comedians and filmmakers. Its legacy endures as a testament to the timeless appeal of the Marx Brothers' unique blend of wordplay, physical comedy, and irreverent satire, making a night at the opera a cornerstone of classic Hollywood comedy. In 2007, the American Film Institute acknowledged the enduring greatness of the 1935 movie A Night at the Opera by ranking it as the 85 greatest American movie of all time. Remarkably, this marked the film's first inclusion on the prestigious list. The recognition speaks volumes about the lasting impact of the Marx Brothers' classic comedy. Beyond accolades, the behind-the-scenes antics add another layer to the movie's history. Harpo Marx, then 47, and no stuntman, opted to perform many of his own stunts. Looking back, he considered it a somewhat foolish endeavor. The dedication to physical comedy and the willingness to take risks underscore the commitment of the Marx Brothers to entertain audiences. Interestingly, the film almost started with a quirky twist. Originally, each Marx Brother was supposed to take turns roaring instead of Leo the Lion. MGM's iconic mascot. In a humorous trailer, the logo sequence was adapted with Groucho, Chico, and finally, Harpo attempting to roar in their distinctive ways. Harpo's attempt, involving his signature horn, added a touch of whimsy to the planned lion roars. These anecdotes, from critical acclaim to behind-the-scenes shenanigans, offer a glimpse into the rich tapestry of a night at the opera. The film's enduring legacy, recognized by institutions like the American Film Institute, showcases its timeless appeal and the Marx Brothers' unique contribution to classic Hollywood comedy. A Night at the Opera, the Marx Brothers' inaugural collaboration with MGM, marked a significant shift in their career. Prior to the film's production, MGM took a proactive approach sending the brothers on a nationwide tour to perform live bits for audiences before other MGM films. This unique opportunity for real-time audience feedback contributed to the movie's reputation as one of their best. Behind the scenes, director Sam Wood's idiosyncrasies became a source of amusement for the irreverent Marx Brothers. Wood's daily routine, starting with a glass of milk due to his ulcer, became fair game. The brothers took it a step further, having the milk delivered to him in a baby bottle, a prank that failed to amuse the director. Wood's attempt to enforce fines for tardiness backfired when Groucho, initially supportive, fell victim to a garage door nailed shut by Chico and Harpo. 
The ensuing betting game on who would be fine next led Wood to abandon the idea. As the Marx brothers navigated the comedic landscape in a night at the opera, an interesting scene, now lost, was cut from subsequent releases. Following a park scene where Rosa reveals her dismissal from the opera, the Marx brothers, along with Rosa and Ricardo, embark on a fire engine. Groucho's comment about lighting his cigar in the fire engine's smokestack adds a touch of humor to this deleted scene. In retrospect, a night at the opera's success, an enduring legacy can be traced back to the collaboration with MGM, the behind-the-scenes antics that infused the production with humor, and the meticulous editing that shaped its final form. These elements, coupled with the Marx Brothers' comedic genius, elevated the film to a timeless classic in the annals of Hollywood comedy. Screenwriter Al Bosberg played a crucial role in shaping the iconic A Night at the Opera. Hired to enhance the humor, his standout contribution was the famous stateroom scene, a chaotic masterpiece that nearly didn't make it to the screen. Bosberg faced relentless pressure from producer Irving Thalberg to complete his work. The breaking point came when Bosberg, exasperated, invited Thalberg to collect the finished script from his office. To their surprise, the script was nowhere to be found. After an exhaustive search, Groucho Marx discovered the shredded and ceiling-nailed script. It took hours to reconstruct, but once restored, the team acknowledged Bosberg's comedic brilliance. Alan Jones' song alone nearly faced the cutting room floor during the editing of A Night at the Opera. In a pivotal moment, Jones pleaded with producer Irving Thalberg to preserve the song. Thalberg, recognizing the Marx Brothers' expertise in comedy and Jones' proficiency in songs, decided to retain a low. This decision turned out to be crucial, as Alone went on to become the sole hit song from any Marx Brothers film. Jones' plea showcased the collaborative dynamics between the performers and the producer, emphasizing the delicate balance between humor and musicality in the film. Thalberg's trust in the Marx Brothers' comedic instincts and Jones' musical prowess added a unique dimension to a night at the opera, where entertainment was not confined to laughs alone but extended to the musical elements, contributing to the film's enduring appeal. This incident highlights the behind-the-scenes negotiations and creative decisions that shaped the final product. It underscores the importance of recognizing each contributor's strengths in the filmmaking process, showcasing how a seemingly simple choice can significantly impact the success and legacy of a cinematic masterpiece. The interplay between comedy and music, exemplified by the preservation of a low, further solidifies a night at the opera's status as a well-rounded and influential piece of classic Hollywood cinema where collaboration and artistic choices converge to create a timeless cinematic experience. As we draw the curtains on our cinematic journey through the timeless masterpiece that is a night at the opera, let the echoes of laughter and the resonance of timeless melodies linger in the corridors of your memory. The Marx Brothers, with their whimsical antics and razor-sharp wit, have painted a vivid tapestry of humor that transcends the boundaries of time. As you reflect on the uproarious chaos and the symphony of laughter orchestrated by Groucho, Chico, and Harpo, consider the unique chord that this cinematic gem may have struck within the recesses of your own experiences. Did you find solace in the slapstick comedy during a challenging time, or did you share a moment of infectious laughter with friends and family? Perhaps the film served as a backdrop to a significant moment in your life, etching itself into the narrative of your personal history. We invite you to unravel the threads of nostalgia and share your cherished memories or profound reflections on a night at the opera. Whether it's the clever wordplay, the comedic timing, or the sheer audacity of the Marx Brothers that has left an indelible mark, your perspective adds another layer to the rich tapestry woven by this cinematic classic. In the grand opera of life, moments like these serve as the crescendos that elevate our spirits and connect us across the vast expanse of time. So, take a moment to contribute your unique note to the harmonious melody of shared experiences. Thank you for joining us on this cinematic escapade and for allowing the magic of a night at the opera to weave its spell on you. Your reflections, like a well-composed area, add depth and resonance to the collective symphony of appreciation for this timeless gem. Until our next rendezvous with the silver screen, revel in the laughter, savor the memories, and embrace the enduring charm of cinematic brilliance.